You have heard it said that the body functions great when you have a little rhythm and routine to your day. But how in the world are you supposed to have healthy routine when your whole life has been thrown into chaos? Good question. And that is exactly what we're chatting about today on Healthy Harmony. Pivot into a new rhythm. Welcome to Healthy Harmony, where we help you clarify and discuss health tactics to harmonize your life. I'm your host and health coach, Jennifer Pickett, and today we're talking rhythm and routine. Since we have some brand new listeners, first, let me say welcome. I am so glad that you've joined us. Allow me a brief introduction. My name is Jennifer Pickett. I'm a dietitian by profession with a master's degree in human nutrition. In August, I will complete my training to be a functional medicine certified health coach. I have spent 23 years in healthcare and health and wellness. Now, doesn't the education and the experience sound impressive for a moment? Okay, let me tell you what that means. That just means that I feel more guilty than you do when I'm not making self-care a priority. I say that because I want you to understand I'm not coming to you as this big expert who has it all figured out and lives this picture-perfect, healthy life. No, I'm someone who is growing through her mistakes and is learning to listen to her body. My goal in being a health coach is simply to encourage, equip, and empower. I believe that we're all warriors and we face battles every single day, especially during this pandemic crisis. And I believe that our health will either equip and empower us or our health will defeat and ultimately destroy us. After listening to a Healthy Harmony podcast or watching a cooking video or participating in an online group or workshop or receiving personalized coaching from me, my top priority always is that you walk away not feeling guilty and ashamed for how things have gone in your health journey in the past, but that you feel empowered to make just a few small changes so that you can take control of your weight and overall wellness. I want all of us to be able to live life to the fullest. So let's get started on our topic today. Consider the health status of your ancestors, maybe one who lived on a farm long before the days dominated by TV and certainly long before the days dominated by phones and social media and Netflix, a time that was honestly a little more simple. You want to talk about rhythm and routine? Well, they had it down. They worked hard, mostly outside, getting vitamin D from the sunshine, being exposed to dirt and the beautiful beneficial microbes in that dirt, and breathing in fresh air. Think about their daily life. They ate a reasonable dinner at a decent time and went to bed not too soon after the sun went down. They woke up early with the sun and went about their day. There was a healthy rhythm and routine to their days because it went with their body's natural biorhythms. Now, I doubt they made decisions about their day based on biorhythms. No, they simply went with what made sense based on the sun rising and the sun setting. This word, biorhythms, have you heard of this? It's interesting. You may have heard, heard the term circadian rhythms. Now, before you start thinking, I have absolutely no interest in this thing called circadian rhythms, let me emphasize that we all have an interest in feeling good and not struggling through life, feeling like crap all the time. Feeling good and having natural energy is a result of your body working efficiently. That is why this is such an important subject. 
So let's dive into this subject of circadian rhythms so we know how it can benefit us. Circadian rhythms are the cycles that tell the body when to sleep, when to wake, and yes, even when to eat. They are physical, mental, and behavioral changes that follow a daily cycle. So think of it like an internal clock. This clock is influenced by external cues like sunlight and temperature, which help determine whether one feels energized or exhausted at different times of the day. Sleeping at night and being awake during the day is an example of a light-related circadian rhythms. Sleeping at night and being awake during the day is an example of a light-related circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythms, by the way, are found in most living things, including animals, plants, and even tiny microbes. We understand that circadian rhythms are governed by a master clock, This master clock is actually a group of neurons called the suprachismatic nucleus. Okay, we'll call it SCN for short because there's a great chance that I'm mispronouncing that. The SCN is located in a region of the brain called the hypothalamus. So this master clock translates cues from the environment into directions for the body, effectively telling it what to do. Here is a crucial example with regard to sleep patterns. The body's master clock, or SCN, controls the production of melatonin. You may have heard about melatonin. It's been called the sleep hormone. So it's the hormone that makes you sleepy. It receives information about incoming light that's relayed from the eyes to the brain. When there's less light, Like at night, the SCN tells the brain to make more melatonin so you get drowsy and go to sleep. So why are these rhythms so vitally important? Because circadian rhythms can influence sleep-wake cycles, hormone release, eating habits, digestion, body temperature, and so much more. Irregular rhythms have been linked to various chronic health conditions, such as sleep disorders, obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, depression, bipolar disorder, and seasonal affective disorder, just to name a few. So now that we know just a little bit of the science and how important these biorhythms are so that we feel good, the question remains. How in the world do we establish a rhythm and a routine for our body when our life has been thrown into total and utter chaos? Well, to quote Ross from the hysterically funny show, Friends, pivot, you have to pivot. Now, especially now, it is vital to establish some rhythm and routine to benefit your health your physical health, and your mental and emotional health. This crisis that we're in, it is no joke, and it is truly taking its toll. I know many people are suffering. I don't want to dismiss or downplay this in any way, shape, or form. But I would love to share with you some tips to help you cope in the middle of this crisis. Some suggestions that will help you feel in control versus out of control. Some suggestions that will help you feel in control instead of out of control. And finally, some ideas that so that you too can pivot to a new rhythm. Before I continue, I want you to know that I developed an awesome tool for you to use with all of this information right here. So I will make sure that that link is in all of the comment sections wherever you listen to this podcast so you can access that. I think you'll love it. Here are top six considerations to include in your new rhythm and routine. Number one, essential nutrition and hydration. This quarantine is honestly taking a lot longer than we initially thought. Now may be a good time to shift towards healthier eating. Yes, we have all been guilty of comfort food eating, and honestly, who can blame us? 
However, we want to look at how we're going to come out of this. Let's not absolutely destroy our health in the process. You may have heard my theory when it comes to nutrition. Keep it simple and avoid diets. Yes, try to stick to real whole foods most of the time. Those foods that you easily recognize. Those that don't necessarily need a nutrition label. You know exactly what it is. That's chicken, that's broccoli, that's an apple, that's an avocado. Real whole foods. It's the processed foods that get us. The packaged foods that have an ingredient list a mile long and you need a chemistry degree to decipher that said ingredient list. Those are loaded with toxic chemicals, preservatives, flavor enhancers, and more just artificial junk. These contribute to a body being toxic, burdened, sluggish, and overwhelmed. No thanks. We also want to make sure we're getting in our essential and vital hydration. Water. Yep, y'all. Just plain water. It does a body good. Aim for half of your weight in body ounces. Adding in some fresh lemon can help your body detoxify and provides a little bit of vitamin C. Number two. Establish a new morning and nighttime routine. Everything is different, so it is super easy to just let our structure or our schedule go. I know I have definitely struggled with this. Anybody else? But remember those vitally important circadian rhythms? Yep, here we go. Our body functions great on rhythm and routine. Do we have to have the same routine from before quarantine? No, not necessarily, but we can establish some rhythm and routine to our day based on our new for now normal. So let's talk bedtime first. Establishing a bedtime routine is absolutely crucial. This sends signals to the body that it's time to relax and unwind, time to slow down, get drowsy, and go to sleep. So what can you implement to send your body these signals? Maybe lowering the lights and staying off electronics 30 minutes before bed, relaxing in a warm Epsom salt bath, reading, diffusing some essential oils, doing some mild stretching, deep breathing, all great ideas to send those signals to your body. It's time to sleep. Going to bed at the same time every night and waking up at the same time is another fantastic biohack to work with your natural biorhythms. So in the morning, we want to do the opposite. We want to send a loud and clear signal to the body. Hey, it's time to wake up. It's time to get going. Let's do this. Some tips include, okay, stop hitting the snooze button, get out of bed, doing some stretches, maybe drinking some lemon water to rehydrate, staying off your phone first thing in the morning, exposing yourself to natural light, sunlight, allowing yourself some quiet time with a devotion or some meditation, and finally getting some exercise or some movement in first thing in the morning. All of these things help wake up the body and set you up for a successful day. It's been said that the first 20 minutes of your day sets the tone for the remainder of the day. Honestly, this can be a struggle for me. I have a tendency to hop on that phone first thing in the morning, and it is a disaster because what I see and what I read, it disturbs me, and it really dictates my thought patterns and my feelings and my emotions the rest of the day. So that is something that I'm really trying to work on with my morning routine, staying off that phone. So you can see how the nighttime routine and the morning routine really work together in harmony. We need to get a good night's sleep so we can have a good morning and a good day. I've even heard it said that you set yourself up for a great night's sleep by having a good morning and moving and exposing yourself to natural light. This is working with our natural rhythms and not against. Okay, number three, 
Speaking of moving, number three is physical activity. Movement does matter, and every little bit counts. As you are using your rhythm and routine planner that I'm providing for you, I want you to write down the exercise you plan to do, that essential movement that you will do for that day. For me, I had to shift my attitude towards exercise and realize that, hey, I don't have to run for miles on end or do an hour-long sweat session um, online, a walk in the neighborhood, a short 15-minute yoga class, doing yard work. It all counts. Our rhythm and routine is going to be different right now. So number four is all about connection. For our mental and emotional health, it is vital that we stay connected to others. We were meant to live in community. We're social beings. This is honestly the toughest part of this quarantine for me. I miss people. Oh, how I miss people. We enjoy having friends over to eat, and I love like just running errands and talking to people I meet. I've made some kind of nice friends this way at some of my favorite places like Trader Joe's and Whole Foods and Callaway's Nursery because I love meeting new people and learning from them. So on this planner that I included for you, both a section for connection and support or empathy. So for connection, who can you connect with that will just put a smile on your face? A friend that makes you laugh or just nourishes your spirit and your soul. And who can you reach out to, to check on and see how they're doing, to offer support and empathy? Thinking of others and offering empathy benefits our mental and emotional health. So of course we want to include this as a vital part of our daily quarantine routine. Number five, gratitude and positive affirmations. Body, mind, and soul. It all goes together. It is astounding the research on gratitude and how it has proven health and well-being benefits. Everything from potentially lowering blood pressure, reducing pain, encouraging health and happiness, and even helping with anxiety. I recently heard a lecture from Dr. Robert Emmons on this subject. I highly recommend you look him up. He is one of the leading experts on the benefits of gratitude. He made the statement that gratitude is the memory of the heart. And this poses the question, is gratitude or expressing gratitude the key to unlocking happiness. Again, please don't misunderstand. So many are in the worst storm of their life right now. It's awful, and the grief is simply overwhelming. But is there one or two things to be grateful for? A man by the name of John Henry Jowett, someone who died in 1923, said that gratitude is a vaccine, an antioxidant. John Henry Jowett, a man who died in 1923, said that gratitude is a vaccine, an antitoxin, and an antiseptic. Wow, powerful words that we can use today. What can we do to express gratitude so that we can reap those tremendous health benefits. This leads us to the final recommendation, the final consideration for your rhythm and routine, stress relief. Stress is at an all time high. The burden that this pandemic has placed on our personal lives is simply massive. So it is more imperative than ever to include stress relief in two your daily routine. For my health coaching clients, I always recommend starting to recognize what does your body do when you're stressed out? Are you getting short of breath? Do you tense your jaw or shoulders? 
Are you getting a headache? Do you have some belly issues? Recognition of how our body responds to stress is first. Then we have to do something about it. Help the body dial back that stress fight or flight response. So some of this can include intentional deep breathing, taking a break, getting outside for a few moments, taking some quiet time or doing some meditation, movement, exercise, expressing gratitude, or hey, just doing something fun. I know sometimes for me, watching a funny video is the perfect the perfect thing to kind of snap me out of that stress response. Laughter does a body good. It's all about being mindful, giving yourself a quick check-in, and then being intentional in helping your body dial back that stress. You know, nothing could have prepared us for this. Absolutely nothing. It is so important that we continue to support our body by honoring those natural circadian rhythms and being courageous enough to put in place a new rhythm and routine for our day. I found this quote by Frederick Lenz. He said, the rhythm of life is give and take. It is necessary to put things back into the system. To not do that is to foul up your own nest, to use up all the natural resources greedily. It just made me think, neglecting self-care can really foul up your own nest. It's time for us to pivot to a new rhythm. I am hopeful as I share this information with you and as well as the Rhythm and Routine Planner, I'm hoping that you will find it to be a tremendous help and benefit. So please check the comments wherever you watch this to uh, receive a copy of that Rhythm and Routine Planner. If you can't find it, you can always email me at uh, jennifer at inspirehealthyharmony.com. As we wrap up, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I have to say that we absolutely love serving you and encouraging you. And one of the other things we absolutely love is receiving your comments and feedback. Our goal with Healthy Harmony is simply to encourage and empower. And when we hear that a podcast was exactly what you needed to hear that day or how you shared it with a friend who needed it, y'all, this makes all the hard work worth it. Please keep that feedback coming. Hey, any and all feedback, we want to hear it. So you can leave that wherever you listen to this podcast, on Apple Podcasts, on Google, on Spotify, etc. And you can always email me, jennifer at inspirehealthyharmony.com. Please remember to subscribe to us on your favorite platform of choice, on Facebook, on Instagram, at Inspire Healthy Harmony. Hey, join in the discussion on the Facebook page. Have you been able to develop a new rhythm and routine during this crazy time. Let's discuss on Facebook. And hey, as always, you can check us out at inspirehealthyharmony.com. So until next time, let's pivot to a new rhythm. And I'm wishing you a healthy and a happy day. Bye, y'all.